Let us, without further ado, uh, go straight to William Clouston, leader of the Social Democratic Party, a man who speaks an awful lot of common sense and a man uh, who for as many weeks as we have, I think, uh, has been calling for a lifting of the lockdown, a different approach to the coronavirus. Now it looks as though we may well get what we want. William, a very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. So um, the good guys may win in the end after all. I mean, it looks as though now the figures are, are tumbling. The infection rates are falling to such an extent that the only game in town, it seems to me now, is how and when and what, as opposed to weather. Yeah, I think that's right. I think uh, Boris Johnson and the government have got themselves uh, into a position now where um, they, they simply must um, back the vaccine. They must, uh, in effect, take the win. And uh, I know he's, he's going to speak next Monday, isn't he, and, and outline a roadmap. Uh, and I think he will do what he's done before, which is probably have a sort of a sequence to that. But uh, and, and it, I suppose it's logical that the sequence is open schools first, um, outdoor leisure and so on. Mm. But he really I mean, there won't be any excuses. I mean, the, the vaccination program has basically been so successful, 15 million people. Uh, the people that are vaccinated already uh, on, on normal circumstances would account for 88 percent of the deaths. Uh, by the time the over 50s are completed, which is which could well be by 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 late April, really there aren't really any excuses because the purpose of the vaccination program was to reach herd immunity via vaccination and unlock. Right. But this is it. I mean, when I see headlines in the papers like, you know, shops could open by April, you know, pubs could open in May. All I think is, well, why are we doing it now? Why are we not doing it now? You know, why are we going to wait till May? It's still the middle of February. You know, in two weeks time, it's I will predict without fear or favour uh, that basically we'll be in a very good place in terms of the numbers of people vaccinated. We'll probably be up to, I don't know, uh, all that everyone under 65 or sorry, everyone over 60 will probably have been vaccinated uh, by the beginning of March. Um, the schools can go back the shops can open and so can the pubs i mean what's the problem yeah i mean it's, it's really a question whether the um government believes its own figures and believes the figures produced by oxford university and other people on the efficacy of the vaccine vaccine so yeah. if they believe them and there's no reason not to then uh, logically you would you would uh, unlock pretty quickly and and you've got to say i know there's a group uh, that the government's been speaking to from the hospitality industry uh, a group of um pub owners who and they've actually walked from the from they refuse to speak to the government now because they don't think they're being taken seriously but mm. there is a lag time and the government's got to think very very carefully about uh, giving giving the hospitality industry and the pubs industry uh, time because because brewing basically takes about a month so you can't just say open next week right uh, so you've got to give them some time and I, I as i say i'm looking forward to a sensible hopefully a sensible uh rollout uh, announced by the government next week and they really will be running out of excuses I think on the data. I think that's right and I mean also I was listening to Graham Brady speaking last week I think to Julie Hartley Brewer when he said um, you know the airline business for example can't just suddenly flick a switch and everything's back to normal you know they might need two to three months notice because they've got planes in different parts of the world they've got employees in different parts of the world they've got employees on furlough you know you can't just suddenly go right everybody back on the bus now. No, it's been a it's been an era from the start. Actually, governments internationally have, have made the mistake of thinking the economy is like a light switch, and it isn't. Mm. It's an ecosystem, and it takes time. Uh, but you know, as I say, I mean, I think you know, obviously, fatigue has set in. People, you know, a lot of people can't really take any more of this, and uh, and and they need hope. And I think uh, you know, Boris Johnson reputedly is very good at that. So I'm I'm looking for some hope, and I'm uh, as I say, I think he. He basically, this country is in a very good position on the vaccine and he needs to take the win. He needs the confidence to take the win uh, because of the programme. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I mean, when you see um, teachers still, and we're going to be talking about schools a little bit later on the show, still being sort of slightly mealy mouthed about, or teaching unions at the very least, being slightly mealy mouthed about the safety factor and whether mm. or not you can ever make it completely and utterly COVID secure in a school. Mm. Well, maybe they should be changing the tune and saying, look, you know, we understand. I was talking to one of my kids at the weekend and he said that about 50 people in his school um, have have got COVID at one point or another. Most of them have been kids. Most of them mm. have not been teachers and nobody has been very ill. Yeah, uh, the teachers, I mean, I think the, the lobbying power of the teaching unions um, they've used throughout this uh, this crisis, actually. And, and 
um, you know, there's, it's questionable as to whether they've put uh, the children first or their own interests first at times. Mm. I think um, certainly on the on the available data on uh, death rates for uh, essential workers, um, people in the hospitality industry and distributive trades and the health service have suffered much more than teachers on the data. Yeah, well, exactly right. Oh, yeah. But I mean, mm. the teachers uh, who have been in front of children have not been in front of children for very long over the course of the last 12 months, let's face it. Um, and yes, they've been teaching some kids who have been the children of key workers and or vulnerable kids. So, you know, some teachers have been doing a great job, but like mm. a lot of people uh, and a lot of industries, you know, some teachers have not been doing a great job. Um, and there's no question that the homeschooling scenario doesn't work. It's a complete and utter waste of time. Um, and now what we have, as I said, as I pointed out to Julia earlier, Sussex Police, uh, and I'm sure all other police departments doing the same thing, sending um, emails to schools to tell them, basically, tell the children to stop going out and mingling with one another, uh, or else we're going to start charging and fining their parents. Outdoors. Yeah, but this is another, this is another part of the pattern of distraction uh, and folly, actually. I mean, the... the there has been some transmission in the winter. It would be natural for that to be the case. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that that's the main areas of transition of the parts of the economy that can't close down. Yeah. If you want food distributed and you want the health service to still function. Um, so, you know, that's a lot of these stories. Any I read any story about uh, police arresting people out in the open as, as um, PR, basically. Yeah. I think yeah. it's not serious. These people aren't being serious. Um, I, you know, I think we've got to be optimistic and we've got to try and get people um, and the government included in the mindset that take the win. I mean, you know, schools, for instance, the, the, I think there's a lot of pressure on the, on the government to open schools on, on the 8th of March and they should do so. Yeah. I think the question of vaccinations for special vaccinations for teachers was always a, a, a slightly difficult one. You could say, well, if, if they're not going to turn up to work, uh, the children are harmed by that. And, you know, I, I suppose logically you could make a case uh, for them to be vaccinated, but they'd be jumping the queue uh, on other mm. people who work in other businesses and trades that, have, as I say, have I suffered mean, could, on the... Couldn't, you, they couldn't you just use, I'm afraid to use the phrase these days, common sense and go, I'll tell you what, if the teachers are over 50, put them, uh, jump them up the queue. If they're under 50, yeah. they don't need to worry. Well, again, a lot of, um, you know, my colleague in the SDP, Patrick O'Flynn, made a point, before, you know, last end of last year that couldn't the universities uh, stay open? Um, you know, a lot of there are a lot of old professors there to, on, on, you know, in the universities. But do you have to do seminars and lectures with them? Why couldn't you teach students with um, doctoral stu uh, candidates and mm. so on? Keep it open. But, yeah. you know, as I say, a lot of this is going to be water on the bridge. I'm actually and we're, as a party, we're looking forward now to what happens, how policy is shaped when we open up. I mean, you've got a, uh, a budget um, in early March. Uh, I think the government should be looking at measures to, for instance, revive the high street. Yeah. I think the pandemic, you've, you've had a terrible imbalance um, between high street sales, physical uh, sales in shops and online trade. I think now um, non-food retail is now for the first time over 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 fifty percent of all retail sales. Yes, uh, you know non-food online retail, mm. um, and and the government needs to seriously have a look. And I hope the chancellor looks at it in the in the budget, at the prospect of of some sort of um, uh, tax on sales for online uh, uh, sales, retail sales, and and to use that money to to try and revive not to not to revive it in a negative sense but it to to, to rejig and reboot mm. the high street i mean people have, you've got about 27,000 vacant shops mm. and the high street town centers are basically the focus uh culturally and economically in many many towns and cities up and down the country and i think they need a regearing you need to get the government to basically tax some of these multinationals they're not very keen on paying yes. tax and avoid it and and use that to reduce rates. I think rent needs to be re reduced as well. Some landlords need to have a look at that. Mm. But if you do that, actually, long term, the future is quite bright for retail. Oh, I think so, yeah. But they also have to take a few other measures that I would like to see. For example, I saw a, a traffic warden out of the weekend giving tickets to people who were parked in a high street. And you just think, mm. you know, mate, this is really not the time. And I realised that, you know, you have to make sure that traffic can flow freely and all that. But it was nothing to do with that. It was clear, purely and simply uh, an overzealous traffic warden working for an overzealous council trying to raise money from uh, the rather beleaguered uh, uh, customers of this country. 
Yeah, they need to look at. I mean, this is a, this has been a long, uh, a, a long term a conflict, hasn't it? Do, do town centres accommodate the car? Um, to what extent do they accommodate the car? I mean, some local authorities really have a hostile attitude towards the car. But remember that the car contains customers that the that the high street wants. Mm. But I think you're going to see uh, an adaptation, quite, as I say, a regearing in the high street uh, away. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the big multi uh, you know stores all, all up and down the country, the, the chain stores are closing anyway. And I think as long as retail property is priced properly to give people a chance mm. to make a living, uh, I think you can have the vitality and viability of many of the town centres will come back. But the government's got to have a programme to try and facilitate that. It can't just stand back and watch this happen. You know, we all know the names. A lot of the multinationals, the big players, uh, are not paying enough mm. tax. And the government needs to, soon needs to look at that as a matter of urgency. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, coming up to the May elections, which appear to be going ahead everywhere, William, are you guys mm. coming up with a manifesto? Uh, and what's it likely to look like? Well, we're, we've got we've got candidates throughout the country and we'll be publishing something shortly. I mean, it's been very, very difficult because it's been part of the stop start, you know, uh, um, approach the government's had. And, mm. and we didn't know until very recently the elections were going to uh, uh, you know, take place. I'm mm. very happy they are. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they've effectively stopped uh, campaigning because we can't campaign. I mean, yeah. you can only distribute leaflets professionally, which for a small party like us is very, very expensive. I think which means what, through the post office or something? Yeah, yeah, and, and professional um, distributors. Yeah. But we, yeah, we'll we'll have we'll, we'll have a, a hoping for a full slate of candidates in, in Leeds. We're very strong in Yorkshire, but up and down the country, we'll have a lot of candidates. And and yeah, I mean, these issues like town centres are, are are vital to get right. I think for local authorities. Oh, I think that's true because also there is a sense I think abroad that there are people who are just fed up with the main. Uh, parties they're not particularly happy yes the vaccine program has worked out terribly well for boris johnson but apart from brexit getting done um mm. they're not that happy with the tories having voted for them and they certainly uh, don't want to go back and vote for labor and the lib dems mm. you might as well bury down uh, the bottom of a landmine you know because uh, there's nothing going on in there i mean i don't think i've heard from ed davey uh, for months no. i don't even know if he's still around is he is he does he hey. you know is he taking a holiday in the bahamas or something they, the Lib Dems appear to be closing down effectively, but yeah. they, as I've said before, they, they, they're trying to combine three incoherent ideas in one party. <laughs> it can't be done. It's interesting. I mean, the, the Labour Party is interesting because Starmer had some sort of honeymoon, didn't he? Uh, you know, and he, he, he did reasonably well, got quite close in the polls, and that's all fallen away. And a lot of the debate, uh, you know, just looking at the newspapers on the weekend, are sort of distracted on what I think are superficial things. Mm. They They... They talk about, you know, well, Mandelson's going to come in and tell. I mean, can you believe the return of the Prince of Darkness? It's ridiculous. No, but it's all so superficial, Mike. I mean, they're not what they're not prepared to talk about is the fact that Starmer's basic core beliefs as a sort of metropolitan progressive mm. do not um, uh, align. They're not close to the red wall seats he needs to win. No, he, as I've said before, he's not entitled to those votes, and he shouldn't have them. Um, no one will really talk about it, but he can he can do as much um, uh, spin and he can he can get the, the spinner back. Uh, but but people aren't fools and they look at Starmer and look at the fact that he didn't really believe in the nation state. He argued, tried to submerge the uh, EU referendum, the 2016 uh, referendum, tried very hard to, 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 to you know, uh, uh, stop that taking place mm. and i think they look at his base at all the kneeling he's done all the woke politics he's behind but basically people look at that and they're not going to vote for that i mean he, he i i don't think i think for very technical reasons i don't think the labor party can possibly win a general election not without no, scotland i, I people... really i don't i don't you know what i don't see them ever winning it because now that they've lost scotland and those 48 seats that they used to count on in order to form a government they've now lost the north of england and i don't see them getting that back anytime soon i think they're done i think the labor party as a as, no, a, as a serious contender for government is a spent force it is and and the and a lot of people mike a lot of people are looking at the red wall seats and looking where we're accustomed to looking at politics in terms of swings aren't we you know mm. there's a swing to the left or swing to the right uh, actually that's that's not what's happened here what's happened is a cultural rotation uh and if if you're misaligned with people's culture and core beliefs and patriotism and you lose them you lose them for good these 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 uh, voters in the north of england the red wall seats are not going to come back to labor that's just not going to happen no. a lot of people don't realize it's not a, a swing it's a rotation um, well, I think we sit as a party right on top of that, and we're going to try our best to try and 
uh, give people something worth voting, you know, in the, in the polling booth. But, but Starmer, I, I, think, I, I think you're right. I think the, a lot of people don't realise how much trouble the Labour Party's yeah. in. No, they're totally, I think they're done, absolutely finished. Finally, yeah. uh, William, what about the SNP? Because we might have another interesting week up in Scotland. You know, will she, won't she, will he, won't he? You know, Alex Salmond apparently, thanks to the spectator, may now appear before this uh, committee. Nicola Sturgeon has cancelled her appearance on the grounds that she wants to go after him. You know, they're in a hell of a mess as well, aren't they? It's shocking. I mean, it really is. I mean, I, I do feel sorry for people north of the border having to put up with this, uh, effectively a one-party state. With an extremely bossy leader who, yeah. who, and, I, and I, I'm, I just, I hope all this comes out, Mike. Is all I can say. I, it must come out. What's going on up, up there? Um, it, it's difficult because, in a sense, you don't want Westminster to police it, but on the other hand, it's pretty rotten. Yeah. North of the border, and, and I don't think people want to live in a one-party state. Yeah. No, listen, it's as rotten as Glasgow Council was some years ago when I was living there, mm. uh, and mm. they had to completely sort of clean it out, literally with a sort of. Um, you know, uh, one of those pipes that went around the bend, you know, because everybody was was, yes, was, was yes. into it so far. And I think the SNP have been running it for too long uh, on their own without any scrutiny whatsoever. Yeah, it needs flushing. I mean, I think we need to, to shine a light on it, basically. But I think, actually, one of the positives, one of the good things that's come out of the, the recent panic about the uh, safety of the, the union is that there will be more scrutiny, actually. I think for a long time, for many years, the SNP have been getting away with not very much scrutiny. The press, the mainstream press, and the, and the I have to say, uh, the BBC and the uh, television uh, journalists have been very poor in, in holding uh, Sturgeon to account. And again, I think now as it starts, a little bit of extra scrutiny We'll find out what's going on. I think it'll be quite difficult for, for Sturgeon actually going forward. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, William, as ever, great to talk to you. William Clouston there, leader of the Social Democratic Party, who will be putting up a lot of candidates come uh, the local elections in May. And I think there will be a very viable uh, alternative for many people who feel betrayed to some extent by uh, the Tory party, uh, hopeless with the Labour Party, there's no point. And with the SNP in Scotland, I mean, goodness gracious me, you talk about dino rod being called, that's what you need. You need to flush it out, root uh, and branch, get everything out of the way and start afresh. I think this is talk.